Roxanne Meadows is an integral part of the Venus Project and, in fact, a co-founder. Of course, Jacques has this beautiful body of work from his 101-year lifespan, but Roxanne's been around for the last 40, and the Venus Project itself is a co-creation of Jacques and Roxanne. And so what I'm interested in so much about the Venus Project is this new value system, the re-education, the how do we find our way through from the standpoint of human nature? First of all, I, I would um, say that the, the term human nature is really, we look at it as a scapegoat. So that, um, you know, they think that, well, if there is a human nature in people that they can't exceed what they're doing. There'll always be war, there'll always be hatred, there'll always be jealousy and crime. And that's just not true. Mm. We feel that people, as Jacques always says, they're perfectly well adjusted for where they're coming from. That all of our values, all of our bigotry and our hatred and our prejudice and um, our notions of good and bad and right and wrong are given to us from the culture that we're raised in. So if we keep doing what we're doing, we will produce the same kind of people and have the same types of problems. We really try and find the root causes of our problems and we feel ultimately it is a system that we live under and it's the notion of using money for regulating resources and it is really a suicidal approach when we have enough resources still today because of our technology we feel in 1927 we could have produced a type of world to some degree where nobody had to suffer unnecessarily because of a lack of resources or services when they first developed prefabrication. But today, with everything that we have, and if we turned it loose for the betterment of society, we could create a tremendous world for everyone. If we turned it loose for the betterment of society. Yeah. Exactly. A world beyond politics, war, and poverty. Right, we have to get beyond that. Yeah, I guess if we have no money, we can't have poverty. That's right, and there'd be <laughs> no stealing. Yeah. So it isn't human nature that people have greed. It's reinforced in this culture. And by having greed, you get more things. You get more money. You do it off of the backs of many other people most of the time. And um, it's just no need to profit over other people's misery. You know, we always say if you get a toothache, somebody makes a buck off of that. If you bump your car, somebody makes a buck off of fixing it. And we don't need to do that anymore. We don't need to even have possessions. We can get beyond that by creating abundance is what we need. You know, sometimes people say, well, we've always had this type of society. People have always been greedy. We've always had wars. We've always had scarcity. And we're talking about being able to create abundance for people so they don't have to fight for their own well-being. We're given the notion of individuality because it fits in with this culture that you have to be responsible for your own safety, your food, your survival, your health care. And uh, we don't need to do that. We can provide that with everybody and for everybody. And finally, get on to the job that needs to be done um, in, instead of, if there is no money, we don't need bankers, we don't need lawyers, we don't need ad, advertising agencies, we don't need stockbrokers. There's so much superficial waste. We don't need to produce things just to keep selling. This culture, you have to sell things to keep the economy going. So we're plundering our resources just to keep selling. Uh, it's, a, it's a game that's a, that is we're, we're falling off the edge of the cliff with this game. And there's nobody talking about what to do about it. People are just beginning to realize that the capitalist system is not working. 
and they say it's broken. It's not broken. It's doing just what it's supposed to be doing. And it's monopolizing more and few people are controlling most of the mm. Earth's resources and few nations are controlling most of the Earth's resources. And as long as you have that, you're going to have the same problems. Mm. But we don't, we have, we have so many resources, we have the technology. It's not, you know, a lot of people say, well, we just need ethical people in government. We just need to vote, you know, if it was Democrats this, this round and then, just, and then it's Republicans the next round. None of those will take care of the problems. Our problems are technical. You know, our computers, if you look at everything that you have, it's a, it's a technical apparatus. So um, we have the technology. It's just the manufacturing and distribution and how we use it, how we organize society and how we direct it. And I understand how people are afraid of technology today because it, they have every right to be. People lose their jobs, they, they, they're drones, there's torture, we use our science even in torture. So um, it, we just have not turned science loose to, to, and have not given scientists the problem of saying how do you eliminate booms and busts? How do you, pre how do you prevent crime? How do you make clean sources of energy? only clean sources of energy. How do you make automobiles or transportation? You don't need automobiles. How do you make transportation efficient? How do you make total cities that are not wasteful and, and stressful places to live? We haven't turned scientists loose on the problems of society for the betterment of people. Today, just like everybody else, scientists are prostitutes more than half of them, or about half of them, work for the military half-time, part-time, or full-time. So, you know, they, they work for wherever the money is. Well, I like to say, too, that we talk about profits over people, et cetera, and the, the machine of capitalism and corporations. And yet, at the end of the day, I also like to acknowledge that these are people who need to feed their families. Absolutely. So there's a valid motivation in doing so, but it seems like the tail's wagging the dog. It's gone too far. Capitalism has been too successful. As I think you've made a perfect statement that a lot of people are saying, well, capitalism is, fa is failing. No, it's succeeding. We're failing because we've chosen that path. Right? That's right. That's right. And, and we don't blame the people. Because they're, like we say, they're perfectly well adjusted for where they come from. And if they're raised in this system, they have those values to support the system. We call them the unappointed guardians of the status quo. Yes, it's, it's exactly. A, yes, it's, Elizabeth Satora says it's their job to protect themselves. Yes. You, you need to justify your existence. The system doesn't protect them. The yeah. system get, doesn't give them what they need. And yeah. it's so easy to do today. Yeah. But they're holding tight to that system because it's rewarded them. I mean, we talk about a resource-based economy, they live in a resource-based economy, but they don't understand it's, they're producing their own demise too. They have to, you know, we all need clean air, clean water, arable land, relevant education, good medical care, and they don't get it either. If we supported science and people and educated people so they can contribute to the well-being of people and solving our problems, then the wealthy lifestyle would be better as well. Everybody's standard of living would be better. So how do we create an education system in which people are taught how to think, not what, just what to think? Well, we feel that when you're very young, study science, study the methods of science. But today, science is used as an abusive tool because it's used within the free enterprise system to beat the other person or you know create enemies because the military is one of the biggest industries we have makes a tremendous amount of money I think it's almost 650 now billion dollars they're putting to the military and the government was about 70 70 billion the next most expensive what they pay in the society so um, our, our priorities are all screwed up within this system because it's wealth, property, and power. And within a resource-based economy, it's the protection of the environment and the well-being of people. 
it, it seems like we're on this trajectory and it, it we feel this impending doom on that path and it seems to us that what we need is to jump track and get on a whole new trajectory that leads to this different place how do we jump that track and what what do we do to get to that place but we agree a lot of people don't know what that place is and that's what the venus project is trying to show us but um unfortunately most people aren't emotionally or educationally have the knowledge to know what direction to go toward because they're not given that knowledge. So we think most likely things will have to get worse, that people have to lose their jobs, which means lose their house, lose sometimes their family, lose their car, have kids have to come out of schools, and that has happened to some degree, or technological unemployment where machines take over and uh, people do not have the money to buy the goods turned out. That's a scenario for the end of the free enterprise system. Or people lose confidence in their elected leaders to solve the problems that we have today. And that seems to be coming true. So those things are what we call the march of events in society, you know, uncontrolled diseases or the march other things. Of events, that, right, the or wars that help enable people to say this isn't working we need something else when it hits their pocketbook otherwise it's the other you know mm -hmm. so we also feel that now is the time to get these ideas out there as quickly as possible so that's why we're so grateful for what you're doing and that's what it'll take within movies or films or TV series or you know tours of, of this place or lecturing or more people understanding this direction and talking to others is the Venus Project the only way, or the, just the best way, or just a really good option? Well, I haven't seen anything else in society where people have gone as far in so many different disciplines and put so many things together. You know, um, Jacques has been working on this all his life, and what pushed him in this direction was that he experienced the Great Depression. And at that time, that's what initiated people talking in the streets about fascism and communism and free enterprise system and mankind united and all different things. And he experienced that. And he experienced that, that there were things in store windows but and in industries that could be used, but they were closed. And people were sent out of their house because they had no money for the rent and people in bread lines, and he felt that it was the rules of the game that we play by that were so screwed up that he started a quest of looking for a different social system that enabled people to thrive more so, and he couldn't find one. So, you know, is there anything else out there? I haven't seen anything mm. that's advanced yeah. as that far advanced. And today, people are just beginning to say, well, technological unemployment, we're going to have a lot of trouble. What do we do? And they're trying to do little, what we call patchwork and remedies of, of uni universal basic income. But, you know, you keep the system as it is. You keep the elitism. You, you keep all the values the same. You keep the education the same. And we don't think that will make the change that's necessary. Exactly. And it, the resource-based economy concept is really at the core of the Venus Project and your goals. And again, it seems very radical to people, eliminating money. It, it's like the, the final taboo. It's the one thing no one's willing to address. No one's willing to right. say, we, we can actually have a conversation about what would the world look like beyond money, beyond all currencies. Why can't what? Why do people have <laughs> such a hard time getting on board with that as as a possible option? Even I don't think they've heard enough of anything yeah. else. They've yeah. grown up in that system, and that's what's rewarded them, and that's the only thing they know. And they've never heard of any other options. But that's why it's so important to get those options out there. And money is really what's holding things back. Using resources to to manipulate. I mean, excuse me. Using money to manipulate resources is so detrimental to everyone it, it it holds back our dreams you know people they say they live in quiet desperation they dare not dream they don't have the money to do things I'm crippled by it yeah so are there other philosophies or programs you're i mean aware of at all even just with that element of let's drop the money and then move forward oh. <laughs> well i think you know, there were things in the past, there was technocracy during the time of um, the Great Depression, and it's kind of a skeleton organization now where they talked about science and not using money, but they talked about using certificates 
for rationing resources that way based on what they had. But today, we have the ability to produce so much. I don't think we need to ration resources anymore. When, um, you know, if there is a shortage, that's what we put scientists on. But, you know, there were little bits and elements and different pieces of, you know, like save the whale or save the environment. You can work all your life in saving a plot of land and, and um, finally get that or purchase it. And a new government system comes in, not a new government system, but a new politi polit excuse me, yeah, political. <laughs> and new political party comes in and they take that away. So there's no security in this system whatsoever. As long as the system rolls along, it's, it, it's, it's not going to meet our needs. It's not built to meet your needs. It's built to make profit at the expense of anything else. It's just such a hard one for people to get ahead around. Well, I was saying the other day how um, people will, I'm sure, look at this and have and say, well, that's, that's an awfully radical solution. And maybe a radical solution is exactly what we need. How bad do things Absolutely. need to get before we say, whoa. And we talk about how we're on this trajectory. And if we want to go a different direction, we all know from physics, there's that point at which things stop before they can turn around and go the other way. And that's what we're interested in, is that arriving at that moment of stop, collective deep breath, massive group hug, we can figure this out and then move forward, find a new way. Well, you know, as I mentioned, all your values are given to you, your notions of right and wrong and good and bad and what you're able to even explore. There's certain things are taboo, as you mentioned. So um, it, it's a red flag to, to check out anything that doesn't support the system. So if you look into money or if, if you talk about cooperation instead of individuality, you know, the rugged individualists, they promote that in this system because it supports capitalism. So those are not things that are promoted. Those are not a value system that's promoted, nor is it a value system to explore many new, new things. You're called radicals or, you know, upstarters or whatever. They, they put names on people, but it's all those people in the past that went against the status quo, quo that gives you all the new ideas that you have. You know, even in technology, they always say it won't work. But I always say, you know, when people say, well, this is just too utopian, I always say that it's, it's utopian trying to keep things as they are and thinking that we will progress and get somewhere. This is utopian thinking that this system is going to get us anywhere. It's just making everything worse. Do you think we have enough resources to take care of everyone who's currently living on Earth, over 7 billion? Yes, we think we do, but the first thing we have to do is take a survey of just what we have mm. and where the arable land is, where the water is, where the, most of the population is, what the illnesses are. We have to take many surveys of where the technical personnel are, where the needs are, and that dictates what we do where. And that will tell us what we have. It's interesting to talk about arable land and water resources when part of the technology is about growing hydroponically, aquaponically, and modern, you know, modern methods, and as well as desalinization and taking advantage right. of the fact that two thirds of the planet is water, right? Right. Well, we can we can do all that, but yeah. initially, when we're first starting, we would if we were starting a first city, we want to make sure we have water accessible to that. And then work on those problems that you're talking about. That's just what we're, we see the first city would be doing, working on problems to make the next city better, working on the, the robotics and um, automated systems to make the next city go up better, more efficient, stronger, more stable. So the goal is this first city, the, the current goal, the, the first step. Um, you've done many. You've done step one, two, three, four, through whatever, but that big implementation of, of the project, the Venus Project. And so this is re part of the resource-based economy is a big part of this. And, and you want to start something where we can eliminate currency. I mean, how in, in that first city do, do we provide for everyone and, and start that resource-based economy? Not just the futuristic designs and the monorail, but, but that foundational well, we We live in the monetary system today. Yes. So we can't exceed that in that way. To, got, to get the first city, we either need the resources 
or we need money to, to initiate it. We will be living between systems. We hope to set it up that be in the city we would not have to have money, that we could supply the goods and services so people can work freely. Okay, so it'd be a, enough of a, an, invest, an initial investment in it that it would already take care of anyone who was selected or chosen. You know, and chosen it would be self-sustaining in terms of energy and food and, and things like that. But we, we may have to sell certain things, you know, and if we have a host country, we would want to share what we're, what we're arriving at that would help that country excel as well. Mm -hmm. But the first city would not be a resource-based economy. That's really a, a global social systems approach, a holistic approach on a global scale. <laughs>